Hey, martial arts addicts all over the world. I hope you're all well and good. I have another video for you today. This one's looking at one of the most well-recognized items in the martial art, the gi. Now, before I start, please keep hitting the like button and making comments. Plus, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. To all my subscribers out there, thank you so much for supporting the channel. And with that, let's begin the video and I hope you enjoy. Jigoro Kano is known as the founder of Judo. His version of Jiu Jitsu that enabled practitioners to spar against resisting partners due to safety changes that he made to the techniques. Now he also brought into the practice of his Judo a philosophy that can be followed in our daily lives, not just in the dojo. However, Jigoro Kano also brought two other important things into the martial arts, the coloured belt grading system and the one I'm going to cover in this video, the Gi. So, just in case you didn't know, the Gi, or Ke Kogi, meaning practice uniform, is a uniform commonly white that you see martial arts practitioners wearing, especially those from Japanese martial arts. So Judo, Karate, Aikido, Jiu Jitsu, they all use a Gi. Even Korean martial arts such as Taekwondo, Tang Sudo, Hapkido, etc. use a Gi, but they call it a Dobok. Now in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they use a Gi, but sometimes it's referred to as a kimono. But regardless of what you call it, this specific training uniform was introduced into the martial arts by Jigoro Kano. There's two reasons as to why Jigoro Kano introduced a training uniform into judo. The first is that jiu-jitsu was originally practiced in whatever clothes the practitioner was wearing. And when Jigoro Kano started teaching, he recognised that students from different socio-economic backgrounds would wear clothing of qualities based on their specific social status. So he had students from wealthy backgrounds all the way to students who, without his help, would have lived in, in poverty on the streets. Now the quality of the clothing that each student wore reflected their status and this could lead to unfair treatment in the dojo. So by introducing a training tunic for all to use, Kano was bringing about an atmosphere where no one was at risk of being judged or treated less than anyone else. And with everyone wearing the same thing, everyone could be seen as being an equal. The second reason that Kano introduced the gi can be explained just by looking at a judogi. The judogi is very thick in comparison to the one that's used in karate, for example, due to the emphasis on grappling techniques, which require you to take a strong grip on your opponent's gi. Now, initially, Kano was using a regular kimono undergarment called a juban, but these would very easily get ripped and torn. So he experimented by using a thicker material, which was loose enough to allow for grips and free body movement of the practitioner until he was satisfied with what he developed. And at this point, his students therefore became the very first people to actually use a gi in training. Kano's first gis had short sleeves, which reached just up to the elbows. And you can see the, the short sleeves in this example of one of Kano's early gis. Now, in addition, the gi pants were shorter than those of today, usually reaching just below the knee. And even before that, the students would often just train with Japanese style underpants, similar to what sumo wrestlers wear, but thinner. Now Kano eventually had both the sleeves and the pants made longer, and there's two possible reasons for this. Firstly, it was probably seen as fine for men to wear a gi jacket and a pair of underwear. However, openly training women might have led Kano to introduce something to hide their modesty. And another reason behind longer sleeves and pants was probably based on what Kano's students were training on. Back then, Kano was teaching judo on traditional straw tatami mats. And you can imagine that these could be a bit abrasive against the skin. So much more so than the plastic covered mats that are used for today's practice and competition. So in 1906, the gis were altered in order to introduce the long sleeve gi that we now have today in modern judo. Since then, there's been various changes introduced in the judogi, such as manufacturing and measurement details recognised by the International Judo Federation, as well as the introduction of the blue gi to make it easier to differentiate between two competitors more easily, due to the contrast between one opponent wearing blue and the other one wearing white. Now, actually, this proved to be quite controversial, especially because many traditionalists felt that the gi should be kept white. 
There were various reasons for this, such as a white gi reflecting the hygiene of the judoka, as you could tell if they had washed their gi before practice, thus offering their training partner or opponent a clean gi to take grips on. Now in competitions, one judoka used to wear an additional red belt or a red material on their belt to differentiate them from the opponent. But in 1986, a Dutch judoka called Anton Giesing, who was the first non-Japanese to win the Judo World Championship in 1961, came up with the idea of one competitor wearing a different colour gi in competition. Now, based on his idea, the blue gi was the colour chosen. However, a point on this is that white isn't actually the traditional colour in my opinion. In fact, the true traditional colour of the judoki would have been a, a cream or off-white colour due to the colour of the fabric itself. But bleaching of the fabric was introduced after this, which brought about the white gi. Nevertheless, the white gi is still seen as the official colour and that is why, according to the International Judo Federation, it's the only colour that a judoka can wear on the podium. Obviously, the gis used in other arts like karate, taekwondo, etc. aren't as thick as the judogi. But that's because they don't spend as much time on grappling techniques in the same way that judo does. Yet the very idea of using these gis and the coloured belt braiding system all come from Jigoro Kano. The Okinawan master who introduced karate to Japan, Gichin Funakoshi, who was the founder of Shotokan Karate, was influenced by the white geese worn by judo practitioners when Jigoro Kano invited him to teach at his dojo, the Kodokan. I've even read that Jigoro Kano gave Gichin Funakoshi his very first white gi and also a black belt to wear. Now Gichin Funakoshi then carried this tradition into karate and soon the other karate masters would do the same. When karate was taught to the Koreans, they called it Tang Sudo, the Korean translation for the original meaning of karate, which was way of the Chinese hand. When many of the Tang Sudo schools developed into Taekwondo, they too carried the gi into their practice. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, or BJJ, has done two very opposite things in regards to the gi. In one way, BJJ has made the gi something cool and almost like a fashion item, with some brands being not only expensive but quite difficult to buy. You also see a trend of sticking patches onto the BJJ gi, including the logos of sponsors etc. Now on the other hand, BJJ has made the gi something not so cool, with the growth of no gi jiu jitsu. Now there's many practitioners who believe that training in a gi is outdated and this has led to no gi styles of BJJ such as Eddie Bravo's 10th planet system. The question of who's right on this is one that I'm not going to discuss today but there is support for both sides of the argument. Maybe Jiu Jitsu does need to be practiced with a gi or maybe we don't need the gi anymore. But when people have new ideas which challenge what we perceive as the norm, they often are met with some hostility. However, what's important is that if people are bringing about change because they firmly believe that it will benefit their students, then there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, after all, that is exactly why Jigoro Kano developed the gi in the first place. Hey, martial arts addicts all over the world. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please, as always, keep hitting that like button and please leave your comments. Plus, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and a big thank you goes out to those who already have. Until the next time, martial arts addicts all over the world, peace and love to all of you.